robots took my podcast, man. From the director who brought you Smokey and the Bandit, Hooper, Cannonball Run, comes the ultimate spectacle. Megaforce, an elite compact fighting unit armed with the most sophisticated weapons ever seen on a movie screen. The mission to preserve freedom and justice and battle the forces of evil. The good guys always win, even in the 80s. Megaforce. Sunday night pod night. Here we are. Jordan Anthony in the movie clubhouse. Okay, all right. Good guys do podcast, even in the 80s. <laughs> Did they even have podcasts in the 80s? No, they just had radio in the 80s, didn't they? Yes, they did. Mega force of mega okay, yeah. force to be reckoned with. Okay, three, two, one. Welcome to our podcast. The robots took my podcast. I am Jordan. And I am Anthony. Anthony, I just have to start off with saying the year 1982. What a yeah. bold, interesting year this was. The year. 1982, it kicked off the 80s. It kick-started the 80s. We had movies like Tron that were technologically ahead, Blade Runner, which was kind of a, a, a new way of looking at things, a new vision. We had Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Had the first computer graphics in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. There was Dark Crystal, Jim Henson's genius uh, puppet movie. John Carpenter's genius remake of The Thing with Kurt Russell. I mean, uh, and... Are we talking about any of these movies today, Anthony? No, no. 1982 was a mega year for movies. But oh, we are talking about Megaforce, a film that... Megaforce, yes. That was maybe not a mega hit. We'll see. <laughs> but it was certainly a movie that came out in 1982 and became a cult hit, I would say, in years of that sorts. Followed. Of sorts. And so this is a very interesting film. It was produced by or made by Golden Harvest, right? And yeah. And Jordan, for the folks at home, what was Golden Harvest? Golden Harvest was a company run by Mr. Raymond Chow, who uh, he actually produced another movie we reviewed called the Man, or another movie we reviewed called The Man from Hong Kong from 1975, also produced by Golden Harvest. Yes. Yeah. The Aussie Hong Kong actioner. Action packed Pee Wee. He's some he this guy Raymond Chow must have been a maestro at getting money together, I guess, because he had apparently two other movies slated this year. High Road to China, Megaforce, and then I can't remember the third one now. I don't have it written down. Yeah, Golden Harvest was was trying to break into the American market with like some really big movies. Mm -hmm. And after making a ton of ton of wonderful action uh, films in Hong Kong and other movies and yeah, and so they got Hal Needham and Jordan, the the director Hal Needham. Who is this fellow? Hal Needham uh, needs no introduction. The man started. Well, let's in introduce the him anyway. <laughs> of course, of course. The man started in the business as a stuntman. One of my favorite professions to talk about because uh, I wanted to be a stuntman when I was a kid. So that's why I, I hold high, Hal Needham in sort of an interesting regard. But yeah, uh, when he became friends with Burt Reynolds, who had also been a stuntman before he was an actor, they became friends. And Burt Reynolds, they became even more friendly after Burt Reynolds became a sort of power to be reckoned with in Hollywood. And Burt Reynolds shepherded his first directorial movie, Smokey and the Bandit. And that was a mega hit, Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah, and he had another hit after that, Hooper, all about the stunning yeah. business in Hollywood. And it was kind of a satirical look. One of my favorite movies by Hal Needham, in fact. I will say. I, I mean, truly, great movie. Favorite Burt Reynolds movie as well, I will say. And so, yeah, Hal Needham also kept going for a bit with Burt Reynolds. And then uh, this is him trying to branch off by himself, I think, after, Bert, after maybe the failure of uh, another... Was it Stroke Race or something like that? Well, Possibly. I mean, Stroke Race came out <laughs> after, but they uh, Cannonball Run. Boom, boom. That was That's right. Hit. I forgot about Cannonball Run. Oh, my God. Followed and, by Cannonball Run to one of my favorite movies. And uh, it's sequel, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, so apparently Bob Kotchler, I guess that's his name, uh, was like a, 
a promoter of race cars, whatever, brought this movie to Hal Needham, you know, and said, hey, this will make a great TV show. Yeah. And then Hal Needham's like, hell, let's make this a movie. And so they he got uh, Golden Harvest somehow involved and Mattel. And lest we leave out Mr. Albert Ruddy, Al Ruddy. Who produced, already of? Who produced the fucking Godfather, God damn it! Sorry. Power in all directions. And the fucking Cannonball Run, God damn it. And the Cannonball Run 2. <laughs> yes, just, so, just a powerhouse of something going on here. A mega a force behind the camera. Right mega, a lot of mega force, mega power behind the camera. Yes. And this movie stars... Barry Bostwick. And where do we know Barry Bostwick from? Uh, those of us who aren't theater fans. I mean, some people may know him as the uh, the, the guy from the Michael J. Fox sitcom Spin City. But we also know him from Rocky Horror Picture Rocky Show Horror. as Brad, the movie Rocky Horror Picture Show from 1975 or 6 or whatever. One of those two years. Damn it, Jordan. Yes. Rocky <laughs> Horror. Yeah, I think nice he did point. a voice on Fantastic Planet, a very trippy french cartoon wow oh on the american version yeah, yeah i didn't think did a voice that, there yeah. and one of our stars is also michael beck and how do we know michael beck jordan michael beck was in a warriors come out and play warriors oh yeah you got it <laughs> i got the foley covered I mean, and also uh, Warlords of the 21st Century, right? Am I also known as Battle Truck? I mean, uh, the list goes on with this guy. A little movie called Xanadu, a little flop, a little giant flop called Xanadu by, you know. What is it with Michael Beck? (laughs) With the Miss Olivia Newton-John produced by Mr. Joel Silver. Anyway, yes, Michael Beck was everywhere in this time period. I think he's great. I love him. And also starring our villain is a Mr. Henry Silva. Henry Silva, yeah. Been in everything. He's been in like 500 movies this guy was in. No, I don't know. Uh, Seems like it. Jeez. He's fantastic. He's always the bad guy. And look at, read, just look through his IMDb profile. Sit back. You know, good God, just the the cigar smoking bad guy in every film. And Jordan, I think he's got, he has to have like a uh, clause in his contract that he has to be smoking a big old cigar in every role. I don't know. I think it was in his contract. Yeah, it was like a box of Cubans for every every day he was on set in his dressing room, <laughs> and he had to be allowed to partake out there in front of the camera with his cigar. You know, nurse his cigar on camera if he pleased. Don't fucking worry about continuity. And also, our heroine in this movie, who we see with hair this time, who is it? Uh, the lovely, beautiful Perseus Kambada uh, from Star Trek The Motion Picture, Nighthawks, which would come out the same year as this movie. I'm sorry, a year before this movie, actually, 1981. Yeah. Um, beautiful, lovely Indian actress uh, died... In 1998, sadly, she chain smoked apparently and had a heart attack. Yeah, she chain smoked a lot apparently. That's sad. Okay, kids, public I'm service sorry. announcement. <laughs> Let's all take a moment. Two, take a moment. A moment of silence for the beautiful. God, she was beautiful, man. She was sorry. a wonderful actress. I can't and, help uh, it. Not that it matters, but Jared Immel does the synth music in this movie. Ugh, yeah. The TV, TV music score uh, fellow, and uh, he did a little TV show. From the 70s, based on the movie that we've talked about, Jordan. Oh, he did God. some music on Logan's Run, the TV show. Did he? Uh, how did I miss that? I thought it was all that guy Lawrence Connor. Maybe he did incidental music. He did a couple, it. yeah, episodes. But oh, okay. filmed in what? Introvision? Introvision, is... yeah. That was an interesting process. where uh, It was sort of a front projection type process. Meaning they would project an image on a, a reflective screen, almost like what you see with a street sign, and it would reflect back into the lens, uh, into a glass, um, and allowed you to actually get a shot done live on set, and gave a little bit of something for the actors to react to, at least as well. Yeah, I don't know if they could actually see it though when they were actually enacting it. They probably saw it when they walked out on stage, but I don't know if they yeah. would actually have something to react to, honestly though. Yeah, I don't know how this works, but I think the director could see, you know, on a on a screen. Exactly. You could see it when you look through the lens, though. That was a thing. So it was an in-camera kind of effect going on, but very complex. You had to set it up and light it properly at the same time. And But damn, when you pulled it off, it worked well, and it was used to full effect a year later in a film 
Uh, John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John star called Two of a Kind when they would they did these Matrix type effects where they would yeah. freeze time around the actors, and then uh, it was used later on in Army of Darkness, the Sam Raimi, the third yeah. in the Evil Dead movies, uh, the Sam. I Raimi. heard Outland Rambo is an expensive uh, process, but apparently uh, you get results in some movies. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but anyways, um, um, so how does this movie begin, Jordan? It begins with um, the guy from Knight Rider uh, and Percy's Kambada. I'm sorry, Edward Mulher playing yeah. the uh, guy, the guy that we would later see in a show that was much like this movie called Knight Rider. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're on their way to a clandestine location. Am I getting this right? I'm not skipping over anything. I yeah, guess. no, but I, I mean, well, I skipped over a whole battle scene at the beginning, probably. Yeah, um, well, it, the, we get a reverse image of some men on motorbikes sort of silhouetted in scenes from the movie. Oh, right? I'm sorry. The title sequence itself. The title yes. sequence. Which is very long, yes. Yes. It reminds me of it reminds me of Land of Doom, sort of, like a motion version of Land of Doom, which is one of the first yeah. movie we talked about, I think. And this movie does have Land of Doom vibes, does it not? Sort of a post-apocalyptic, deserty vibe i don't know it does a bit yeah i mean uh with its nevada locations in megaforce it does have that same look as the uh, turkish locations in land of doom but yeah yeah i agree it still had because but yeah i think this was cashing in on the road warrior as well honestly yeah um, with the look of this and the, the fact that we have all this shit in the desert and, and we'll talk a little bit about road warriors later i think but we have a very synth happy score a very symphonic score <laughs> over this <laughs> Yeah, this is too much synthesizer, even in the 80s, you know. <laughs> and so we begin with these people uh, who've been captured being read a script that they're being liberated by an army, but they don't look entirely grateful to be liberated, as oftentimes happens. And then we see some tanks blow up a model of a power plant. Oh, yes, right? yes. Nice big model of power plant, yeah. Very well put together. <laughs> It's cool. And then we find out that these vehicles are retreating. We find out the Republic of Sardoon, if I'm saying this right, is being attacked by their neighbor, Gamibia. A lot of global political overtones in this film. Yeah, they could have simplified this shit more if they were, you know, if this movie was meant to be as campy as everybody behind the scenes said it was, you know. Yeah. And this is where we meet Henry Silva, right? For the first time. As the villain, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so we, and, and to your point, General Byrne White, uh, Edward Mulher, is, he wants to engage these people, but he can't cross the border or he's going to start a war. Yes, he's going to start a war, Anthony. So then he's dropped off in another desert. A lot of deserts in this movie. And Boy, they had nothing but desert, but it's a lot of cheap lighting as, a, as the producers are probably going, yes, we found some cheap lighting. Yeah, with Percy's Kambada, who's Zara Bindu, she's the president of of Sardoon's daughter, and also she's in the military, right? And so they're yes. dropped off to meet Megaforce, whatever that is. And then <laughs> Dallas, Michael Beck from Megaforce, shows up in a sweet old Ford Bronco. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. And then shows that they have this this cool little Bronco has hologram technology. We get a, yeah. we get a sense that these Megaforce guys, uh, whatever this is, these guys are kind of cocky fellows with lots of technology. And this is after they've been waiting in the desert for a big a, a while, and we get to see Perseus Kambata posing on a rock in model esque poses uh, nicely. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got, I got distracted. <laughs> and Edward Mulher going, Where are they? Jeez, this is inexcusable. What is going on here? What is going on here? You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's quite English and quite upset and quite put out by all of this waiting yeah. in the desert. Even you kind of hate him automatically, though, because you're like, what do you want, a fucking martini already? I mean, he he's the general for a desert nation. Like, like, why does he have a problem waiting in the desert? Isn't that kind of his job? Yeah, right. Know. Anyway. Oh, I'm he, sorry, Mr. Robert E. Lee. Uh. Yeah. This desert has snakes in it. I don't know. I don't know what the, his problem is. But anyway, so the Megaforce crew shows up on their armed motorcycles in a training sequence, and then they're blowing up some target balloons with missiles. We get to see a nice stunt. Uh, yeah. yeah. What happens? Jerry D- Jerry Bostwick. <laughs> Jerry Bostwick insurance. <laughs> That's Barry Bostwick's uh, younger brother, Jerry Bostwick. <laughs> Jerry Bostwick has <laughs> Chevrolet. Um, so Barry Bostwick <laughs> jumps... <laughs> they park the truck between these two convenient boulders and Barry Bostwick and his headband show up. 
you know, with his rock star hair, like he oh, just yeah. got out of a music video. It's Barry Boswick in a Chippendales dancer's outfit, uh, there to save the world with his dyed blonde, perfectly hairsprayed and blow dried hair in every moment. Why didn't his hair get a credit in this movie? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just it, it it should honestly because it it does what it needs to do in every scene perfectly. Yeah, no direction to the hair at all. Yeah, his his hairstylist has some sort of advanced laser technology, I think. I don't know. His beard is perfectly chiseled as well. His beard is perfectly blonde blended with the hair. Um, I have to say, um, and yeah, yeah. Hey, he he looks he he looks like the '80s. What can you and say? His like, name, I love his name, Ace Hunter. Ace Hunter. Ace Hunter. Say it, say it with me, Anthony. Ace Hunter. <laughs> Ace Hunter. <laughs> Good guys have names like Ace Hunter, even in the '80s, especially in the '80s. I bet you didn't know this, Anthony, but I used to write um, bet you porn I on the side, and that was my pen name was Ace Hunter. Ace no, Hunter. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I your your Ed Wood novel career? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I Met Her in a Taxi Cab by Ace Hunter. <laughs> Thief of Midnight by Ace Hunter. In My Bedroom After Midnight by Ace Hunter. So they trade some snappy dialogue. He flirts with Zara. And then they go. And this movie, I want to tell you, you know, with, with just from the beginning, these stunts and these like. 70s decor macrame wall art painted motorcycles i don't know this roller yeah. rink uh i don't know sort of design scheme for these motorcycles it looks like the bmx disc bikes from the 80s that came after this movie actually where they just <laughs> yeah. covered the they just covered this it was just a disc that covered the spokes on the wheel that's all it did you know i just made it look it's better like- sleeker you know <laughs> It's like armored motorcycles like we saw in a lot of post-apocalyptic movies like Land of Doom, but done very well. Yeah, it it's not too much different from even a cheaper movie like Warriors of the Wasteland that would come a year after or um yeah, or oh, yeah. Land of Doom or <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that is that's a double bill right there. Which is the better film? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. This movie was a big movie. This was not just a small chump change movie from what I yeah. understand. This was big for its time. It was one of the biggest Probably one of the most expensive movies of the of its time, I imagine, honestly. Yeah. From what I and understand. It, this movie is trying with every scene, trying to convince you that it is badass. This is a badass eighties movie. The seventies are over, everybody. And this movie wants you to know that it is cool, you know? And you know what? It doesn't take itself seriously. It's gonna be camp all the way. And I don't even know if this movie knows its real tone, honestly. Everybody yeah. behind the scenes I read said, you know, Barry Boswick Played it like camp purposely. Yeah. Uh, Hal Needham said he didn't want to kill anybody in this movie or show anybody being killed horribly in this movie. Yes. I mean, he wanted to make a cartoon, it sounds like. Yeah, this is like a PG movie. Yeah. This is this really not just Hal Needham doing trying to do Star Wars, essentially? Come on, let's be real here. I think you're right. It's it yeah, it's it's trying to be epic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We'll we'll get into the review later. Let's get into the movie here. The movie. But anyway, so we go to the secret Megaforce base, and we meet George Firth as Professor Eggstrom, who is he's in a, he's in a lot of movies as well. He's this movie's Q, like the you know like the tech guy in every you know action movie or right. you know, whatever you know outfitting these bikes and all these super cool dune buggies with lasers and things and. Um, I remember him from Butch Cassidy's Sundance Kid. He played Woodcock, the guy on the on the train uh, that oh, keeps getting blown up. Okay, he he's, did but have he's a been familiarity to him. Yeah, like, yeah, he's been in everything. He's great in this role. He had a familiarness yeah. to him, yeah. And so they give the, the general and Zara a tour of their badass composite shot base to make it look like it's way bigger than it is. Right, you know this is mean? where the introvision comes in handy here on this part. Which it kind of looks cool. It looks like, you know, if, if they made an Iron Man movie in the... You know, 19, in 1982, you know, this <laughs> yeah. is Tony Stark base, you know, <laughs> the Stark headquarters, or Stark Industries. The Avengers, the Avengers, yeah, it's 1982. The Avengers, yeah, it's the Avengers <laughs> hidden, yeah, exactly. It's the Avengers hidden base in Nevada. 
And so they have Russian jets and all sorts of tech there, and it's it's the I guess they're they're bankrolled by something called SCUF, which is the Supreme Command United Free Forces. It's the best men in advanced equipment and and the best one liners that money can buy. <laughs> I think half the Mega Force budget is probably spent on these these one liners they trade back and forth. Every man has had his records erased, you know, and he's they're just expecting death. And then they have those, like you mentioned, those onesies that are just way too tight. The tightest onesies that money can buy. The tightest onesies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the technology of the era could produce. Funny you mentioned the costumes. You know that there was no costume designer on this movie, right? I'm not joking. It was just Barry Bostwick getting it out of his closet? The costumes were designed by Mattel and Mattel alone. This is not even a joke. This is actual fact that I pulled off Wikipedia, which just blew, which I thought was hilarious. All the spandex you see in this movie was made by Mattel. (laughs) I mean, clearly they wanted a a toy line tie in because this was the 80s. That was about to become the major move. Yet, it had a minor tie-in. I can get to that later on, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, um, because I mean, Star Wars made a ton of movie a few years before. Right? Yeah. This was the lines. time Star Wars was... Everybody was stealing from Star Wars, basically. This was... An, I mean, Megaforce is definitely a product of the Star Wars age. Um, what is going on? Are you... Oh, sorry. Hang on. Are, 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 you, are you recording this from a pound? Like, are you dog-sitting? Are you... Yeah, are you I, rescuing, I am. Rescuing uh, the am dogs a, as I'm we I'm doing do my, my second job at working at a pound here. Um, at an animal shelter. Yeah. Jordan, dog walker and podcaster. Yes. I only have this job at midnight, and I <laughs> I walk the dog at midnight. Jordan, Dogs Jordan's after other, midnight. Uh, <laughs> other podcast is... <laughs> dog walking after midnight. Deep Doggy thoughts dad. While walking the dog. <laughs> Doggy daycare with Jordan. Okay. Yes, doggy daycare. So anyway, no, we the dog the- was on the bed, uh, scratching just now. Sorry. Yeah. So Megaforce has this big command center and it's hacked into all the nation's military. And this movie's kind of ahead of its time. There's very believable tech in this film. Yeah. And if Wikipedia is to be believed, uh, apparently the CIA was quite interested in this. There were a little, you know, there were some tanks because uh, there's a ton of tanks and a lot of gear in this movie that looks very expensive. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, I guess they were getting that from the military. And the CIA was a little concerned. It's like, you know, we're kind of working on some of this stuff, Megaforce, and especially Barry Bostwick's uh, magical headband. Uh, you know, we're outfitting <laughs> our agents with that in the field right now. So they were a little worried about that. Yeah. But still, Megaforce, thank God, was made. Anyway. By the way, I want to talk about Barry Bostwick's headband one more time. Like, just saying, <laughs> when I look at that headband, all I think is, let's get physical, physical. <laughs> We're gonna get this. Like he's gonna he's gonna go into aerobics or something. He's gonna start exercising and going. All right, now I don't have to do any research on this man. I know him. Now let's all get to one, two, three. Let's do this. One, two. Let's do the bin. Let's do the bin. Okay. The the mega force jazzer size mega size um, video uh, series that came out right after this, where you know he was he was doing. You know, curls, uh, you know, st- you know, stand-ups on motorcycles, squats, the rest, it was great. Is it the costume that makes us think this as well? Because it was designed by Mattel, who designed, who did, you know, who we knew back, who people knew back then for Barbie and He-Man, Masters of the Universe? Yeah, he, do- he does. He looks like an action figure. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> So I mean, like a normal person. And how did Mattel? How could Mattel afford this? This was a lot more thread than they were used to. I know. <laughs> the original costumes they showed up with like these like tiny little costumes. They're like, oh wait, we had to make big costumes. Oh, That's wow. what my picture is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh, you want this for actors? Oh, we, I thought we, you were we got these four-inch costumes over here. I, oh. I, I, I didn't know. I, I you know, people are going to be wearing these things. Like, was Mattel shocked they were designing the costumes as well? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they show up with a bunch of little little helicopters and and bikes. And like, here you go. Oh, wait a minute. What? And Hal Needham's like, wait. I gave you guys a million dollars. <laughs> anyway. I thought, I thought this was just dolls you wanted costumes for. I didn't know you wanted for the actors. What the? He- oh, my God. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to get back to my people and have to get back to your people and... Oh, Jesus, this is a mess. 
These gonna look stupid on people. They're great on an action figure. They look stupid on people, though. Anyway, all right, it's your money. Yeah. So anyway, it does have that campy feel because of those costumes, amongst many things. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. That you know, that that, that early lycra. Yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, they have this big supercomputer and like files and everybody, including General Guerrera, who's an old buddy of Ace, who served with him in jump school. And, you know, you know, they were just they had old times together. These old buddies. They clearly you know. used to be drinking buddies and other things, I guess, as well. Yeah. Shared yeah. the same hooker, probably. Oh, um, yeah. Back, back in the war, you know. Back in the war, yes. What happens in Da Nang stays in Da Nang, you know what I mean? Anyway, so they were old buddies, and this is the general that was, like, you know, capturing the people from earlier. And so Guerrero, he goes in the history, and Guerrero's country fell, and he went back to save it, and he couldn't save it because the politicians were holding him back. Message. Yeah. And he was getting some of that Boonang, uh, Poontang, yes, as well. <laughs> San Gabriel, whatever it is, whatever country, I forgot what it was, but anyway. So, yeah. and then he, so jaded, he, he became a mercenary years later. And I a saw rogue. him in Nice and he had a bankroll. And we get this whole history with those two. And then yeah. we see a swanky meal and a lot of exposition in the Megaforce dining room, which is like a five star restaurant, Jordan. Is this what the taxpayers' money is going to so that Megaforce can have candles? And, Boy, and like yeah. silver service and, 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 and white glove treatment there in their in their mess hall? Like what I, I know I wanna join Megaforce. I mean, I was watching this scene just like seduce me. Yeah. Are you trying yeah. to get me into bed? Okay, yeah. I'm there. I'm joining this Megaforce. Yeah, you gonna buy me the lobster? You know. <laughs> And so then they unleash a scheme. They're going to trick General Guerrera into crossing this border, and they have four minutes to do it. And they have this cool hologram, like 3D representation of the battlefield and everything in the mountains. And all I can say, Jordan, is it's a trap! <laughs> Watch out. It looks, it reminds me of Star Wars a little bit. Oh, that's once again. I mean, why yeah. does it remind you of Star Wars? Hello. Mm, I'm just yeah. saying. Another another Star Wars nod there. And it's a really cool map, and they're going to hit his ammo dumps. They're going to take all their little motorcycles, and they have the, these doom buggies with lasers on them with this photoactive skin that changes color, which we do have now, which is kind of you know forward thinking. A lot of this tech is very real, and that's what I like about it, except, except for maybe the lasers. But, you know, even in the 80s, you know, you can, you can have laser doom buggies. Yeah. Are we at the skydiving scene yet, is what I have to say. Yes. Okay, so Zara wants to go with them, right? Yeah. And we get an unnecessary cartoon pig. I just wanted to point that out. So this Oh, this that's right. Movie. The holographic cartoon pig that looks like it's like a Warner Brothers looking yeah. kind of or Disney, I guess even looking yeah. Gives, yeah. gives Mal- Michael Beck's Dallas character a real <laughs> kick. He's just like <laughs> <laughs> right at the end of it, and it truly shows the redneck side of him, I guess, the yeah. last cartoons. He's a, he's a country guy, and I guess he's from Dallas. I don't know. These are these guys are all like extras from um, Forrest Gump, it seems. And there was yes. Dallas, and he was from Houston, and I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so Megaforce has the jokes. They've got these laser-guided precision jokes, for sure. Um, and Zara wants to go with him. I can do this, yeah. too. So they send her through a training sequence, right? And we get what, Jordan? We get a long skydiving scene. Looks like a balletic version of the 1991 movie Point Break. Yeah. But the scene is not exactly 100% pure adrenaline. No, no. (laughs) No. But I do get a special (laughs) feeling during this scene. Um, Anthony, let's skydive right now in the air. You know, remember, keep your... Keep your arms and your legs like this so you don't get into a spin, Anthony. Yeah, okay. No need to gain your air. Your, uh, no, 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 to gain your vertical airspeed, drop your head between your legs. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So, so just enjoy the skydive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's enjoy and, um, this, this skydiving scene here. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just brought my own music to this whole scene. You know. <laughs> It was so special, I just couldn't resist. I mean, this music itself gives me a special feeling. I mean, this is, you know, if it's too bad I'm... If I was single, man, I would use this for, you know, hey, you want a drink? Would that make you more comfortable? 
I invited you for a reason, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, enough of the music, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's what we get, and we get a lot of, um, we get, oddly, a lot of great stunt footage mixed with bad-looking intro vision flying around in front of an intro vision screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you get, it's interspersed, it's cut, and it's like, it takes you out of it, because you see real skydiving footage, which is no big deal, but yeah. then you see, yeah. Uh, At one point, screen. you think they're going to drown for some reason, even though they're in the air? <laughs> the way they're acting? I it's, don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's from a lesser Bond movie. It's it's a scene from a lesser Bond movie. I, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I mean, God, you look at a Bond movie like Moonraker, also a uh, campy Roger Moore movie. And man, yeah. it's got a hell of a stunt scene at the beginning that's still better than this sequence. I'm sorry, I hate to say yeah. that. No disrespect, Mr. Hal Needham, but yeah. yeah. Anyway. And then, so anyway, they're continuing to train Zara, and she, like, they put her in this cool, like, um, training pod that has a video projection of, like, a battle, and it's kind of like. I don't yeah. know what you call that, but of course they've used that to train for years in, in real military scenarios, and that's really cool. You know, I will say I kept staring to the side of the screen and during this scene, and I realized the plant in my living room, the leaves were in the way of the screen and needed to be parted. And yeah. to move that plant. So that was that was one thing helpful, you know, during this scene in reality. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying. But anyway. And, and so anyway, she's kicking ass, and then Ace is like, basically, no girls allowed in Megaforce. Boy, he is such a chauvinist, isn't he? Good God, man, this, this Ace guy. Yeah. And so, I mean, so she can't be a part of their boys club and she can't go on their little mission. She's like, look, I'm in the military. Hello, I, I can do this. I've probably been on more missions than you. And blah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. And so Already with the, the kicking. Jeez. But he makes a good point, I guess. And that's, you know, you're going to compromise unit cohesion. Everybody's worked together for years. We know each other, right? Yeah. And then she understands that. And then right after that, she goes to HR. <laughs> and files a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> Women can't get a break, even in the 80s. She goes no. to Megaforce HR. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Megaforce HR. What can I do for you today? Um, this guy, Ace Hunter, I need to talk to you about him. He's a real... I don't like his uh, his outdated attitude uh, towards women. Um <laughs> Um, really, I'm so sorry. Megaforce is always concerned about this kind of thing. Trust me. We, 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 we know, we, we are so sorry for what you've gone through with, what is his name? Hunter? Ace, Ace Hunter's one of our top guys, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he reviews all of our complaints. He's, he's the leader of Megaforce. I'll send this up to him and to fill out these forms. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway. It's yeah, exactly. And then she's and then she's like, and also this Dallas guy, um, he has a Confederate flag patch and also a Confederate flag that he I puts find on it his motorcycle. Kind of offensive and kind of racist, <laughs> you know. Well, he's a Dukes of Hazard fan. That's all. It, it's a Dukes of Hazard Confederate patch. It's from the General Lee. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It's you know. <laughs> Come on, lady. It's the 80s. Come on, lady. <laughs> also, that, that Dallas guy said something to me about uh, being a, alone in the woods or something. I didn't like it. It was inappropriate. Um, <laughs> Look, fill out these forms. <laughs> you know, we'll get back to you. <laughs> the Megaforce forms that are, yeah, Megaforce sexual harassment forms. Uh, when you've been sexually harassed by a Megaforce employee, what to know? <laughs> yeah. They had the videos there, I'm sure, to watch. So, yeah, these guys have no excuse, you know. And I can only imagine what the Megaforce sexual harassment, what you need to know videos are like. <laughs> you know. I know everyone in Megaforce is wearing tight uniforms, but that's not uh, a come on. Yeah. There's a scene with a, wa a man walking into a scene and a woman's working on a missile. He's like, nice missile. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, how could this be the wrong thing to say <laughs> in this moment? <laughs> Megaforce training videos. I love it. So anyway, uh, Megaforce is getting the plan together, but she's okay with this. Even in the 80s, Jordan, like she's like, I guess I'm a woman. I, you know, I guess. And I, 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 that really took me out of it. She seemed like they, they set her up to being a strong, independent woman, and then they don't let her play with the guys. They don't let her play in their reindeer games. Um, yeah, their war games here. They're like it's okay for you to be outspoken a little bit, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. 
but it, it, she's like in, in my country, men and women fight together. But I, I, I don't know. That that was weird. One of the many weird things here. They set up something they didn't pay off on it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But anyway, so all that training sequence for for nothing because at the end of it, he's like, "You're just a chick. Sorry." I mean, yeah, he gives her that spiel in the beginning, right before they jump out in the skydive thing, and then yeah. she she jump, she leaps before he's even done with the spiel. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. But uh, she's like, "Is that it?" And yeah. That kind of so, shows some growth. But anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so there, but there's a romance budding here. And then she, you know, he's telling her about the plan and now they're, they're, they've got to leave. And then she kisses him as they're about to get on the plane. And he gives her a thumb kiss, a trademark thumb kiss. Yeah. And I think the action figures would have done the thumb kiss. I don't know. Maybe. It was quick thumb kiss action. <laughs> if you que- if they squeeze the legs. Quick thumb kiss action. Ace Hunter with new thumb kiss action. New Ace Hunter 12 inch doll with new thumb kissing action. He glowed the dark headband from Mattel. And then so they get on their planes, and this is like, wow, real DC 10s or whatever. This is like real equipment. Yeah. Spared no expense, man. I'm sorry, you know? Bad. One more thing about the Ace Hunter doll. The reason it had thumb kissing action was because they wouldn't give it guns. That was why. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Nobody was actually harmed in the making of this film. Like, it's like, come on. It's like the old G.I. Joe from the 80s. Like, all those 80s and 90s cartoons were like, like a, a plane would blow up and then everybody's okay. There'd be like little parachutes coming down. Everyone's all right. No one got hurt. Yeah. You know. Not even black scar. No scars, nothing. Yeah. Snake Eyes got a paper cut, but he's all right, everybody. Um, and so. They go into they they fly over to the drop zone at night, and we get yeah. some th- thrilling, some somewhat thrilling techno music, and then the Mega Force theme. Man, <laughs> something like that. I think. Yeah, this is not the Night Rider theme. Everybody, settle down. <laughs> oh For my a few god, bars, I was Knight confused. <laughs> Knight Rider kind of stole from this thing. Knight Rider sounds better, though, kind of, I have yeah. to say. Knight Rider rocks more. <laughs> yeah, it's trumpety. It's a bit silly, but it's fine. And then there's a timer begins, which is interesting for the strike. Like, four minutes. They got four minutes to do this. It begins to time at the bottom of the screen, which is really a cool idea. Yeah. And then, so Megaforce rolls in. They blow up the ammo dump with their laser dune buggies. They're blowing up tanks and stuff. And this is all a ruse because they're trying to lead Guerrero and his men to crossing the border. And once they cross the border, then the general and his troops over in Sardoon can attack at that point. So they're, they're just trying to draw them out. Right. And so there's this thrilling scene in which, like, uh, things are blowing up. And, and some of the Megaforce guys are actually getting hit, you know, which is cool. Which is fine because that's the biggest thing about that's my biggest problem here so far. I have to bring up Megaforce looks like such an in, invincible unit that, and the villain doesn't really seem like a threat here. You know yeah. what I mean? The, the villain doesn't seem like a bigger invincible unit, a bigger threat over Megaforce. So it's like you kind of know they're going to go in and kick ass. So you're kind of surprised if anybody does fucking get shot. Yeah, nobody gets shot. They just get knocked off their motorcycles. And a couple or, guys yeah, right. do. Yeah, yeah. And, and this one, I think he's Russian, this one guy hides behind some ammo boxes in a war zone. Not a smart idea. Not, no. not, no. Megaforce. Not a good idea. No. He missed that training video. Like, when in the middle of fire, hide behind some ammo boxes. No, of course not. Oh, yeah. Hide behind those gasoline drums. <laughs> Jesus, man. Not While you're there, smart. smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so then we got the command vehicle guy, the sort of rec- recon vehicle, and you know, communicating to all the guys and coordinating the attack. And then these, like, bad guys sneak up. Oh, oh uh, you have to bring up the cameo. That was a cameo, you realize that? Oh, Inside the vehicle. who was it? That's Hal Needham himself. Was that Hal Needham jacket? himself? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Acting chops. That's good. He's good. Y'all read yeah. me. He's all y'all. Y'all read me there. Yeah, this is Mega Force 1 and 2 coming in. Yeah. How y'all looking out there? Yeah. What the hell's going on in this movie? The director crept into the scene, basically. <laughs> he wanted that extra paycheck. They fired the actor that did this. Yeah. They, the other actor was Clint Howard in this scene, and they fired him. <laughs> yeah. How he was like, fuck you. you. I'll show you how to be an operator. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Coming in? Hey. How you doing? <laughs> you got one line. It's They're coming in hot and heavy. Let me do it. Get out of here. Right? Let me do Look, it. How hard is pushing goddamn buttons, huh? 
How hard is it? God damn it. That's the asshole how yeah. of director. I don't know if he was like that in real life. No. I'm just making this shit he's up. He's like a cool guy. People out there listening, yes. He sounds like he was probably laid back, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dom DeLuise thought he was a real asshole, but no, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this guy, I don't know. He's But Dom DeLuise was known to be difficult on set at all times. He might have looked like he was happy-go-loving. Hey, I'm Dom DeLuise. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was a fucking diva behind the scenes, Dom Dilly. He's like, he was like, listen to me. I'm not saying that fucking line. God fucking damn it. <laughs> who, who would fucking say this shit? Huh? Anyway, <laughs> side note. Uh, I'm not wearing that dress. <laughs> yeah. You know. He what? argued with Gene Wilder on wearing a dress on Haunted Honeymoon. That was his whole... <laughs> that's all he had to do in that movie, too, was wear a dress and makeup. And he, he was a diva even on that one. No, I'm just... I'm just making this up to the Dillowies people. We should talk about Haunted Honeymoon. Yeah. Oh, he was, he, was a, he was an awesome No, no, guy. he sounds like he was no, probably a sweetheart. Kidding. Yes, to the Dillowies people, no, no, I'm, we're just joking, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The estate of Dom Dillowies is, is filing. We know nothing right about now. Dom Dillowies, yes. He's a sweet guy, anyway. He shouldn't have made that one canon film with the monkey, I'm just saying, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And, and we will continue this on a Dillowies Chat, our new podcast, where we just talk about... Dom Del- the Dom DeLuise acting family. That's right. Uh, anyway, and so he's in the command vehicle, and then these Gambibian soldiers sneak up, and he's... What happens? Does He points this weapon at them, and does it shrink them as they're loading this bazooka? What what happens there? Did you get that? I think that? it disintegrated them. I but think that was what little... it was implying, but yeah, it's pretty fucked up. It kind of reminded me of that moment in War of the Worlds, the old George Powell 1955 uh, War of the Worlds, or... Uh, whatever year that was, but um. Yeah, children gather around. Grandpa, <laughs> tell us about the 1955 George Powell War of the Worlds. Well, We're all ears. Let me tell you, this preacher walks toward the mothership and it, it disintegrates him right there as he's trying to say a sermon. But I think that's what happened. But I don't. It's like is a real missing, and then we hear these little like sped up little voices, like little chip monkey voices. So the shrink them. Something happened. It's there weird, the yeah, because it's a weird cut. Yeah, yeah, something happened. I don't know what the hell that was. I want, I almost wonder if they couldn't afford that effect on that reel, and they were just like, yeah, ah, fuck it, keep moving forward. They blew their money on um, Barry Bostwick's hair and his headband. That was half the wardrobe, from what I read. There was about five hundred thousand dollars for Barry Boswick's hair, mm-hmm. and then another five hundred thousand for that spandex outfit by Mattel. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, there's we see the the Megaforce guys escaping from there, and they're going to like lead uh, Guerrero and his troops out. Then we see some wet roads, Jordan, even in the desert. I don't know what's with these <laughs> wet roads. It's Nevada in the desert, and the roads are wet. Even in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so the Megaforce guys are sitting there. It's, it's pretty cool. They're refueling. I kind of like the Megaforce logistics. There's some thought put behind this. So they they have their own refueling station out there and visible in the desert. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's pretty cool. They have a yurt, and they're all hanging out, and then they're having kumbacha tea. I don't yeah. know what they're doing. They're hanging out in the desert under this tent. And so then we get... And I want to I wanna say that... Um, there's a couple notable sort of actors in this Megaforce crew. A lot of faces that have popped up in smaller roles. Yeah. But one of the guys that we see is... Um, Evan Kim. Evan Kim, thank you. Who was from what? Oh my God, I, the Deadpool. Uh, he was Dirty yes. Harry's partner. A movie? Dirty Harry sequel we have not yet talked about, yeah. Yeah, which we might have to talk about that one at some point. Deadpool is an interesting Dirty Harry sequel. Anyway, uh, and from Kentucky Fried Kentucky, Movie. Exactly, Jordan. Exactly. And he was this had this amazing... Enter the Dragon parody. Uh, yeah. A Fistful of Yin, I believe it was called. Yeah, Bruce Lee parody. <laughs> amazing. He was fantastic in that. And he only has a few lines here, but he's just he's just great. He's a great actor. He was in V also, even. Uh, what I, yeah. yeah. V uh, is Mark Singer's... Uh, Partner, I guess, in the beginning, the first pilot. Yeah, he's like yeah. his assistant kind of guy. I don't know. We, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So then Guerrera, and this is when the movie gets weird. Guerrera shows up in a helicopter, and they don't shoot it, the helicopter down. It's just like, oh, hey, what's up? And Guerrera gets out. He's like, Ace, buddy, what's going on? This is like the weirdest scene in action movie history. Yes. The bad guy just comes to hang out, Jordan. And that's what I mean about downplaying the threat once again. This is like another example of it right here. It's just like, oh, uh, what? They're friends? I'm confused. And even the people, yeah, the other characters in the movie are going, I'm so confused right now. And even us as the audience is like, I don't know, what? Huh? Why don't you just, what? are you going to pull up a tray with a shot of tequila shots? Or, you <laughs> yeah. know, 
I mean, are you going to, yeah, I mean, shit, you know. Hey, buddy, I got a sixer of bush light. Let's hang, you know. <laughs> yeah. Did a tailgate just pull up for them? <laughs> no, he shows up with a grill. It's, it's game day. I, I mean, mean I yeah, it, yeah. He's got, he's, he's right down to throwing another shrimp on the Barbie. I mean, <laughs> no, he's, he's got a chef's hat and he's just like, hey, yeah. hey burgers, anyone? He's just like, <laughs> they look like they're about to watch the Super Bowl together. Yeah. <laughs> and so, hey, it's my man. How you been? Hey, let's see <laughs> that. You, hey, you, you like Cuban cigar? Here you go. You want a shot of tequila? Yeah. But that's the thing. It doesn't work for the movie, but I think that Barry Bostwick and Henry Silva have great chemistry i like these two i like these two characters i like that they're buddies yeah. i like that it sabotages the movie but i kind of want to see these dudes hanging out i, I love that because they're just he's so unconcerned and there's real there's real camaraderie here in a strange way i don't in know in a parallel universe they made this really cool western movie at that same time together over in italy yeah <laughs> And now I weep because I think about that movie. <laughs> For a couple of dollars more. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Starring Barry Postwick and Henry Silva. Yeah. He's got the, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see it. My, my mind's already making that movie go, yeah. well, like, happen right now. I can see it. I know. I see a Western with them together. Yes, totally. Good guys win shootouts, even in the 1880s, you know. <laughs> Good guys still kill the bad guy, even in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> but they're great together, but it it deflates the whole movie. Your point, Jordan, it's just like, and then he, he's so unconcerned, and then the general shows up with, with um, um, what's her name, Zara, yeah. and then he's like, do you want to tell Michelle I, oh, hey, you know, we got some bad news for you, buddy. You know, it's so weird. Like the the secret yeah. megaforce like place where they were going to intercept, and their whole plan and all this, and everyone just knows where they are and just flying over there. Some thanks, megaforce. Everyone knows where you are. Like, what kind of elite secret strike force yeah. is just ha having a picnic out in the desert with this big tent, and everyone knows where you are? That defeats the whole purpose to a, a covert strike. You it's know? like if an old friend showed up and told you he was going to rob you right there at your house. And you're like, oh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's been a while. Hasn't it? Yeah, I came here to rob you. You yeah. came here to rob me? <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, you, you always were a kidder. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I came here to rob you. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, then. You better get to robbing me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All it's right. crazy. But I like it. And then, so anyway, so the general has some bad news. And then we get one of the themes of this movie that we get time and time again is that the politicians are all getting in the way of this operation and they won't let the good guys win. They're tying their hands behind their backs. Yeah. You know, good guys can't win even in the 80s because of politicians. You need to let them military folk handle things and not let the politicians get in the way. That's what you need. Yeah. It's a very right. It's almost Republican kind of. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said it. I'm Ra sorry. No, but you're right. We get this Reagan era, you know, pro-military sort of thing. And then the politicians in Washington won't let us go down and blow up whatever country we need to blow up situation here. That's what I mean, too, more the the Reagan era kind of Republican kind of pro-military yeah. uh, kind of message. Yeah. This mega force was bankrolled by by the Reagan re-election campaign. I, I don't I don't know. Um, Which makes it even funnier that Trey Parker and Matt Stone, that this inspired their movie Team America, you know, America. Fuck yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Team mega America. Force, fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, what mega force should, and, and hey, lean into that. But are you are are we like a, a little campy silly movie or are we really actually trying to make some sort of statement like that? Team America knows what kind of movie it is better than this movie does at least. Yeah. It's actually Team America is a good remake of the Megaforce honestly, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but can, can you picture a more serious Megaforce cuz we have like headbands and Her and Henry Silva hanging out, you know, and I mean it, it, it makes no sense, Jordan. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was thinking that at least half, uh, closer to the end of this movie, I was thinking, wow, this movie would be so much better if it were Top Gun Maverick kind of yeah. flavor, you know? If it were serious, it's like if people it were, are yeah. dying. If it were grittier, 
Yeah. yeah, he could be sit there and be like, people are fucking dying over there, you know, women and children. You know, it's like, it's an act of war, Ace, if you cross this border. And yeah. he's like, oh, we don't give a damn. There's people over there that need to be saved. And, movie, and that's not the movie we get. We get yeah. this yuck, yuck, fart jokes. I don't know. We, it's, it's, ugh. Once again, it's the villain. The villain, this movie needs a James Bond supervillain. I'm sorry. Yeah. It needs a supervillain living in a high tower somewhere or, or a super underground headquarters or wherever. With yeah. a, a super army of super soldiers or whatever to go head to head. If you're going to, that's yeah. the problem here. Megaforce looks like the bigger threat here. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. And that could be, Hey, that could even be a, a better plot. Like maybe we find out that Megaforce is like the problem. I mean, they're this, this unsanctioned this, yeah. entity that's going around killing people. And maybe Guerra can come out, could have come out and said, you know what? Oh, you think you're doing great. You just killed a bunch of people over here uh, and whatever. These yeah. were refugees, Megaforce, blah, 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 blah. You've fallen into my trap. Any damn thing. Let's yeah. spend 10 minutes writing a script instead of... I, I don't totally hate this movie. This movie is fun at the no. end of the day. It's not hateable, I will say. I I wasn't miserable watching this movie. I will, I'm not saying that. But I do kind of sit here and go, man, think about think about this movie had been like Iron Man from yeah. 2007. The first Iron Man movie. My God. Uh, the first Iron Man movie barely even yeah. had a script itself. They had to pull that shit out of, you know, the talent, basically, that yeah. they had available, that they had, you know. But I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Well, Iron Man. Balance of Cross of Iron. And, yeah. Iron Eagle. Any of the irons. Any of them. <laughs> Even, or Iron Eagle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Make it a damn movie. Is, is what I'm Iron saying. Eagle the th- there's real shit going on, at least in that movie, even too. You're, yeah. Something. Get that I don't kid's know. dad out of that prison, whatever, yes. Some shit like that to make this, instead of just sitting you know, little 80s one liners. Hey, we'll, we'll get to that in, in a minute. Um, yeah. So Zara gives a teary apology for this whole thing because Megaforce is basically in its own way. And, 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 Honestly, Ace is wearing an, a USA patch, so there's already an American sanctioned strike force, that, and I don't care, that's in here. These yeah. these planes left America and came in here and destroyed a facility. The political, global political ramifications are already pretty fucked up. They don't address that. It's cool. And then somehow, like, Megaforce has to leave the country. And then that becomes the third act. Megaforce has to get out. So yeah. we go from this action movie, we go from Rambo 3 or some shit <laughs> yeah. to a, a movie like a survival movie where they have to escape. Yeah. Which is so weird. It's just so weird. Even in the 80s, Jordan. And what? <laughs> and yet they're trying to do Naked Gun. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> I'm, okay, I'm going to say this. Even in, if one looks back at the old Adam West Batman, which is campy, even the threat is still real in there. You know, yeah. it doesn't, just because something's campy doesn't mean you can't have a logical plot from A to Z yes. going on with it at the exactly. same time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you're making fun of has to be taken seriously, just like you're doing a James Bond movie, in my opinion, even if you go camp. Um, that just sounds like a lazy way out of them saying, of the producers saying, you know, well, that's what we meant to do, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a big giant laser hole in the middle of this movie at this point, And you're like, so wait, the movie's about them just leaving the country and trying to get out? And I guess, but they don't really drum up the stakes. Everyone's hanging out like, all right, Megaforce, good luck. And then, it, so basically... The Megaforce guys have to, the only place, where, and I kind of like the logistics of this part, where the only place these big uh, transport planes that they have to get on can land is this dry lake bed, right? Yeah. And that's kind of cool. I like that that whole setup. Yes. They have to get there, and so, but but the problem is, is the Gambibian army, or however you say it, I'm probably butchering it anyway. But the, the, all the all the the is military that a crime family, no, no, <laughs> you you don't mess with the Gambibians. Did you just Ace. mention a crime family on the air, Anthony? <laughs> a real yeah, crime exactly. family. No. Growing up, Gambibian. Anyway. <laughs> The Caribbean crime family was arrested today for dealing in headbands in, in Aquanetta. Aquanet. Yes. But anyway, back to this movie about these LeBaron yeah. dancers and spandex fighting <laughs> yes. the enemy. And so For America, the, yeah. So Guerrero is like, okay, Megaforce, you're never gonna get out of here. You know, you got it. We got. We're already got the the place. Um, you know, the military's down there, and so why don't you just lay down your weapons, surrender your men, and give up? I mean, the, your men are just numbers, Ace. That's right. Surrender your spandex. Lay down and your this, silver jackets. It's like, yeah. <laughs> give up your headband. He says, never. 
Never. <laughs> my headband is power. It gives me power. <laughs> my magic headband. He says it with a fist in the air, going down like a like a like ballad. He's like Samson with that headband. If my headband his... is power, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Guerrero's like in the seventies, back when we were getting drunk and whoring around, we could be idealists. <laughs> Today, yeah. it's too he expensive. Does say that, yeah. Back in the seventies, we could be idealists, like forgetting like even that they had terrorists in the seventies, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who were not idealistic all the time, for yeah. real, like. Carlos the Jackal. I mean, that dude was a mercenary terrorist. You know, he didn't fucking care about ideals. That was the 70s. Yeah. Just saying. Just that saying. That was the 70s. 70s yeah. was all about ideals, right? And then... And then not. <laughs> should have had, Yeah, and then not. They should have had a flashback to those two guys doing blow in some Honduras bar or something. Oh my God, <laughs> I would love that. I would have loved that. I mean, yeah, show some history with these fuckers. You know, like, I, I don't know. I mean, you get a sense of history with them, with their acting. I agree. There's some good acting there. You know. I wanted to see a prequel to those, a flashback. I wanted to see those two, but because there is so much chemistry, I want to see more, more yeah. of that. Like, do you remember in uh, Invasion USA, same sort of situation where Chuck Norris's character had history with the bad guy? This happens in a lot of movies. Yeah, um, that's right. And we that didn't was see done that. better. That was that was better done better. Done. Yeah, that was. wasn't done well. No, in fact, <laughs> Invasion USA is a better movie up by comparison. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I know I said that. <laughs> Shots fired. You're, that's This is like, you just made Barry Boswick's headman just burn. I'm just, yeah. This podcast ruined any chances of ever trying to get the real Al Ruddy on, we, <laughs> like we dreamed about. The uh, real Barry Boswick. The real anyway. Al Ruddy is like, oh, fuck these guys. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he says, you know, it's, it's too expensive to be idealistic. You know, you need to join me. You need to be a mercenary gun for hire who doesn't really give a shit about how this happens. Is just making money. <laughs> I don't really care about this cause. So there's yeah. really no stakes because I don't give a shit. And then Barry Boswick says, there's some things you can't even put a price on, like my men, even in the 80s. <laughs> and then so Guerrero leaves. And, and Ace is like, okay, here's what we're going to do. The, the army's there. Yeah. Ace has a plan. He's like, okay, so the, the military's waiting there in this dry lake bed, but there's a little trail behind them that somehow they don't know about. I don't know. Over the mountains, through Oops. the woods. We're going to come up in their rear, and we're going to just, like, come up through their rear, Jordan, and we're going to ram them from behind, and we're just going to, like, just we're, plow we're through. We're going to give them the mega force in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to blow right through their behind as the planes land, and we're going to blow the coal out of that whole coming. fucking canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're just going to just sneak right through this armament, you know, all these tanks, and somehow. Sneak right land through the colon of that armament. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With that Mega Four Cinema. We'll never see it coming. And then so we see the, their, their big planes coming in, their transport planes come in. Uh, and of course, the tanks are shooting at them, but luckily, the planes have. Uh, magic plot armor to protect them, but actually one of the, one of the planes does get hit, which I think is cool, and that ramps up the stakes a little bit because now there's only one plane, right? Yeah, and but you're plane's... not going to see anybody die at least. Luckily. No, no, no. Well, thank goodness. Enough. Don't worry, thank people. You're not going to see anybody die. This movie is safe for work, honestly. Yeah, totally safe for work. Well, except for the whole HR portion. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yeah, except for the the chauvinistic language, the chauvinistic uh, sh- women uh, shaming, you know, and the Confederate patch woman. the guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Confederate patch the them. one guy's wearing. Maybe, uh, maybe. Okay, maybe it's not safe for work. Totally. Even yeah. Well, PG. Ace is wearing a patch that says "No Girls Allowed" with the S backward, <laughs> which I thought was really good. That's right. No, I know. Uh, no. so, anyway, so the the plane's taking fire, and of course, Megaforce rams from behind. They blow through the uh, the line there, and all the tanks are in confu- you know confused, turning turrets around the other way, and and then Megaforce right. has to like ride through across an open, just an absolute openness, just completely vulnerable to fire. Worst plan ever. Uh, yeah. Try to get on this plane, but it's Mega Force. They'll survive. They'll make it. It's actually, yeah, it's actually a pretty good scene. There's a lot of dust and a lot of tanks and a lot of shooting and laser dune buggies, and it's action packed, Pee Wee. Great cinematography. All the killing. I love this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to Pacino and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood there. And pretty yeah, good, yeah. Pretty good cinematography, right? And then Ace even jumps a tank and drops a grenade in it. This this kind of had vibes of the, speaking of Star Wars, the AT-AT, like the walkers. 
Is that what they're called? What is? Oh the... yeah. Although this was a year before Jedi, I... so yeah, maybe maybe Jedi still from Megaforce. <laughs> Fan theory. Did <laughs> I like this uh, Megaforce? Uh... I like I kind of like that final scene. Dear Mr. Lucas, did you steal that moment with the adat from Megaforce directly? Cause it looks shot for shot like a remake. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe so. I don't know. But you're right. It does. It's, it's kind of the same kind of thing. But that's a war. I mean, that's kind of a war movie. thing. It's kind of a war movie thing. It's been done in a lot of movies. And yeah, he you talking about where he taps on the uh, the door of the tank with the yeah, uh, and he with drops the butt the... of the gun. Which was kind of yeah. weird. He's literally yeah. holding the barrel of the gun. He's just tapping the like. Well, no we, we almost we almost get to that, but you bring that up in two seconds. Because oh, what sorry, hap- sorry. What happened was is so the plane lands and then Megaforce breaks through the line and they're all going toward the plane. They're all driving across the desert, uh, dry lake bed in Nevada, right? And looks like the kind of place they test rocket cars or you know do test drives and, and commercials and then each of the the megaforce vehicles just releases this rainbow pride smoke screen right, right? oh that's right the yeah. tanks and there's a great helicopter shot it's all pretty cool they all like their they, they all like the end of the smoke balls that are on the end of their their uh, motorcycles yeah the smoke balls like you get at the fourth of july uh, oh know. yeah I don't know where they get the smoke. Yeah, unless it's just they went down to the county smoke. line and they they bought some fireworks and it's it's just a cool little scene. And then, but Ace is hit and falls off it's his very colorful, bike. Very colorful. Yeah, Ace falls off his bike and he's okay. Everybody, he's okay. But that's right. I I my heart just went pitter patter for a second yeah. there when he fell off. You know, and I, there's no he was wearing that spandex. That's not really protecting him. I mean, <laughs> no, it is not. There's, there's no Kevlar anywhere. Clearly on his suit, he looks vulnerable. I'm sorry, he looks. Do vulnerable. not <laughs> wear spandex workout gear into a firefight, people. Uh, Megaforce is poorly equipped. I mean, I mean, it, maybe it's not spandex. Maybe in the movie, it's you know protective spandex that is Jordan, made of some silky. Thing. I don't know that can stop a knife like the shit that Wayne Enterprises makes and Batman because I don't know but they didn't explain it so I don't know Jordan don't try to retcon in fan theory Megaforce no that's just spandex because guess what it's even in the 80s Jordan come on now even so- in the 80s Men are wearing lycra, even in the eighties. <laughs> so, so, um, but it's kind of thrilling because Ace is like off his bike, and then the tanks are rolling up, and the Mega Force guys are all running, you know, rolling toward the jet. And it's you have a few minutes of some tension there, sort of, I guess. Yeah, I was on the edge of my seat. I was. I was nodding off, and I was noticing that plant <laughs> once again on the edge of my screen, which I thought I'd move properly, and I had to mess with the leaf one more time. In this, part, in this part of the movie. <laughs> Jordan saw a fly and had to chase it around. <laughs> his, his, his I got distracted. Room. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw my taxes lying there, and I was like, you know, these taxes aren't going to do themselves, Jordan. So uh, I took a second. Oh, as turbo the taxes. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. No, my wife and I did file. Thank you for reminding me, though. <laughs> that's what we're here for. I would file your taxes and I'm on file top them of it. early. Thank God. Oh, so we're, yeah, we're talking about this movie. Wilford Brimley, file your taxes and file them early. File Um, your taxes, file them often. (laughs) And so, anyway. um, File them early. So, then we get, then what happens, so Ace is okay and he sneaks up to the top of a tank and then what what does he do? Oh, he taps on the door with the butt of his, his ray gun, his laser gun. With the yeah, just holding the, the laser gun by the barrel, by the muzzle part, just tap tap. Hey, buddy, and the uh, yeah, he t- like, yeah, drops a grenade right into the uh, inside the well, tank. No, no, with that these. would be cool. That would be cool. He did that earlier when he jumped. Oh, that's no, right. He taps on there, and, and gun safety kids do not take your laser gun and tap it with with anything with with the the butt of it. That's just not. Yes, never hold any small. gun, no matter whether it's the future or the past. Never hold any gun by the barrel. Uh, the front barrel. That's not not a good idea, kids. You're not the crow. Barry, yeah. Barry, Bo- ooh, too soon. Yeah. Barry Bostwick, you should have done better. Come oh, on. I was just going to say, you're not the crow. Your hand's not going to heal when that bullet goes through the hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even in the 80s. Even in the and 80s, so, yes. And so, anyway, I kind of love the scene. So the tank door opens and it's Guerrero. And he's like, Ace, buddy, what's going on? I just, I just oh, that's love that. Right. Yeah, the villain Hi, is Ace. right there, easily found once again. And then, Jordan. We get what? What is? What does they say? The good guys always win, even in the eighties. 
Exactly. We get, ladies and gentlemen, we have a trailer drop. We have a poster. We've got a one-liner, kids. A one-liner that stays with you in the trailer. We got that trailer moment. That's one thing they understood early on here. A trailer. Yeah. Moment, yes. Yeah, they're making this movie for the trailer. It's gonna be on the action figure boxes. We're gonna we're gonna make a mint off of the Mega Force guys. This is great. Yes. Eat your heart out, Star Wars and Lucasfilm. Ooh. We have a poster, everybody. <laughs> Even though it ended up being deeds, not words. Which I don't. Did we hear that in the movie at any point? I, I don't recall hearing that in the movie. It's on Michael Beck's cap, which looks like honestly like a Mega Force Nostromo cap. Um, anyway. Oh yeah. It's just, I guess that was cut. I don't know. And then, so anyway, he's like, I got to say goodbye, buddy. He's like, all right, Ace. You know, and it's just like it's so weird. And so Ace gets on his bike. And as the plane is taking off and like Dallas is there like, well, we got to go. And the thrilling moment, we the Ace is nowhere to be seen, right? And he left then out what the happens? part where he's like, I got to say bye, buddy. How you doing? You need anything? You need any money or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You 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 you're not too hot in this tank, are you? Okay. Yeah. Hey. I, you want any? I I'll give you a massage right now if you want. Back rub. Brought you, you a to? mojito there, buddy. Uh, no, he's like, yeah. Here's a here's a here's a tall frosty. It looks hot in that tank. Um. Anyway. So Dallas is like waiting and all the Megaforce guys are on the plane and the plane is, he's like, we got to go. Ace is nowhere to be seen and the plane oh, is taken this off. This scene, yes, this moment. Yes, I'm sorry, continue. Yes, I know no, where no. you're going with this one, yes. And then Jordan, the most memorable thing in this film or almost any film ever made, what happens? Oh my God, this is, you talk, of, we always talk about the Deus Ex Machina, but I did not know these bikes could fly like... <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so Ace takes off slowly off the ground. The bike uh, has wings flap right out. Of, they just fly right out of the side of it. We Did we know that the the bikes could fly, Anthony, until now? I, I think that earlier we got a mention of this. I, I, it, I They didn't, they teased it, but I don't think they really explained it. And that was like whenever... Professor Eggstrom was saying something. He's like, oh, it looks great. We're testing it out. But yeah, they didn't say what. But no, Jordan, to, to, your an, to answer your question, no, we did not know these bikes could fly. Okay, and I'm going to nerd out here a little bit. They, did, they, did they not already watch Galactica 1980, where uh, the fucking the bikes on that show that were, you know, from Galactica, when they landed on Earth, they, they, they did the same thing already. Sorry, already did it, Megaforce. Sorry. Already did it this movie. Anyway. Jordan, I, I think that was too deep a cut for people even in the 80s. Oh, there you go again with that. Even in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. So so the most memorable thing, and the bike flies, and it's this terrible rear projection, whatever green screen is going on here. And he the, the filmmakers have the audacity. It's so wooden. It's so cheesy. It, he stands out against the background so much that it's clearly sitting on a stationary vehicle. And he even does a, he even does a spin. He does. He literally he does a, a roll. Spins. He does a barrel roll. He does a barrel roll just like you could do in a jet fighter plane, you know. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And I mean, and then the funny thing is these guys are just waiting for him in the back of this aircraft, this plane uh, carrier, you know, the back of this thing. And they've got the just the bay door wide open. All the yeah. pressure, all the pressure released, you know, and there's all these guys just standing there like, yeah, just waiting in high five. And yeah, just and, and just like, how did they not see the dailies, Jordan? Did they they must have been proud of this effect. Like, it's it's ridiculous. It's I mean, so rid even and then they, they leaned into it with a barrel roll. I mean, come on, man. And at the same time, there's no suspense in the scene at all. Like, is he going to make it or is he not? Like, no, no. You know. If your bike can fly, it, that would have even been better if the wheel caught. Yeah. But then the it stopped working and then he had to leap onto the, the thing and he's hanging or something. Or, or they throw a, they they could have like thrown a line out to him and he jumps and grabs the well, line. And, and, then... and once again, there was a James Bond movie that did this better years yeah. after this movie called Living Daylights where they had an aircraft carrier stunt. Yeah. And I mean that would now that was fucking suspenseful. Pardon my yeah. French, but yeah, I mean they were flying out the back. You didn't know whether they're gonna they're gonna live because they're hanging off of a net, literally flying yeah. over the thing. 
And I mean, it looked real most of the time. So this clearly, he's flying. Barry Boswick looks beautiful flying in front of the IntraVision screen safely uh, with this bike barreling. Yes, you can you can almost see the crew members pushing it on yeah. on a little dolly onto the onto the plane set. You know, the rear of the plane. You can see it's another like, crew yeah. member just you know sipping coffee off to the side even during yeah. this moment. No, I James mean, just, Bond did it. Yeah, James Bond did it better. I read, too, that the producer, one of the producers said that, like, the audience was howling during the scene. I'm like, dude, they weren't howling. They were fucking howling because this was fucking hilarious. That's why. And they were all probably Even in the 80s. Even in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, but at the same time... That even in the 80s zinger is just not going to stop. It's it's not going to stop. You can add that to everything. (laughs) I mean... But it makes, it's the thing that makes the movie memorable. It's so over the top. It's so cheesy. It's so campy. It's so bad. Yeah, true. I did manage to find a gif of the scene to send you, like, when we were, we were you know, even oh, yeah. when we were, you yeah, know, yeah. were texting each other. You know. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a meme. It's a thing. Even today. Even in the, the even 2020s. 41 years later talking about this movie. Jeez. It's, it's so bad. It's just become history 41 years ago a movie was made called megaforce in 1982 it's so bad it survived the yeah it's it, it, it survived the decades it's so bad and i love it well, it also you proves it? that you could make a bad movie even in 1982 yes <laughs> which was a stellar year by the way once again yeah so it's ridiculous and then Guerrero sees this happen, and he just starts laughing. He's not pissed. He's like, see you next time, Ace. <laughs> like, you know, just blatantly teasing a sequel. Yeah, we you didn't know? even halfway kill him. Nothing. No, he doesn't nothing. Get a, he, a near-death scene, nothing. No, no, no fight with him. He, he doesn't, he's a mercenary. He doesn't care. He's going to chase his next paycheck. He doesn't even lose, like, legs or arms or eyes or, you yeah. know, a nose He's or happy anything. for Ace. His buddy. Yeah. Yeah, You bested me, Ace. Oh, well. uh. This was the same, you know, Ace was mad at him because he stole his lighter also early on. That was a part of the big conflict. He stole his fucking lighter. Like, That's their big beef. Not his woman. Not 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 killed somebody. His brother. Yeah. He stole his lighter. I mean, that's petty ace. No. It was that night they were out drinking, doing blow, and smoking a lot of joints, and he stole his fucking lighter. And that's what he was mad well, about. Then, okay, okay, okay. Then, but I, It was, was during you, that hot night in Bolivia they had together. No. Guerrero was like, <laughs> bro, you got drunk and forgot that you gave that to me. And then for a minute he's like, wait a minute. No, and I was like, wait, well, wait a minute here, Ace. You, you guys were pretty drunk. I don't know. Is this how all I, I, wars conflicted. start out in the world? World. I mean, I'm just confused. Now I feel naive <laughs> after watching this movie. Is this how all wars begin out there in the world, Anthony? Is this how Kim Jong-un got pissed off at our guy? Did he just like, you know, fucker stole my lighter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it, it, yeah. We had themes. that one dinner together. We we're supposed to talk about peace. And the fucker stole my lighter. And that, that set the whole thing off. Trump stole my lighter. <laughs> Den- Dennis Rodman left the lighter. I stole his, so we're good. Hey, hey this light is really, really neat. Uh, hope you don't, you like it, don't you? Hey, hey what's that over there? <laughs> oh, God, you're right. It's so petty. And Ace is so petty. He's been nursing this grudge for I want to see this movie, too, by the way. <laughs> I mean, at least the lighter could have had some secret map in it to some something or something there could have been something more than the lighter other than it's just a light yeah anyway uh, it's a, a map that leads to uh you know with a, a map with a you know a caper deep inside like the the duran duran song of you to kill saints <laughs> or the lighter could have had the pick a picture his last picture of his his deceased love on it or something and like like a locket kind of thing or uh, something yeah something more than the lighter just had lighter uranium buddy. in there i don't know yeah <laughs> Some shit. Anyway, that's not what happened. No, anyway, it was so, a goddamn Zippo. It was over a goddamn yeah, Zippo. This movie wouldn't have happened. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. Ace is pissed about a lighter and so risks his men's lives and, and all this equipment and millions of dollars of equipment just basically because he's pissed about his lighter. I mean, that is some petty shit. It had his initials on there, Anthony. Jeez, come on. Yeah. Engraved on there. You know, advice for people in film, Ace, let it go. It's just a material possession, man. It's just he, a thing, you he know? He bought that lighter at the Richmond Mall in Richmond, Virginia, 
And he had it engraved right there with his girlfriend when he did that. That was a very special lighter to him. No, I, see, see, look, there's no backstory. That's a problem too. There's not even a backstory with the lighter to make it real, make him. Yeah. Like, why is the lighter so sacred to him? You know, why because this so movie's important? yeah, this movie's campy and cheesy and doesn't care to give us that backstory. It doesn't care to give that sort of character development. Movie, you don't take yourself seriously enough. You don't care about what you're telling us, movie. Clearly, yeah. that is your problem. If I'm going to talk to this movie like a person, listen, movie, you need to. I don't like what I don't like how lazy you were with me, movie. Let me just tell you that right off the bat, okay? You need to care more about what you're telling the people out there, okay? You need to take it a little more seriously. Movie, you turned in the script like your homework uh, a day late and uh, and half-assed, you know? We yeah. actually need a story we care about and characters we care about, movie. You know? If you don't care, then we don't care, movie. And by Get the way, together. who told you you were funny? You're not. You're not <laughs> funny at all. I don't know why you think you're so funny. Anyway, I had to tell this movie something, Anthony. Yeah. I can talk to this movie like a person. This is therapeutic for me now. I feel better. I, I know. I got a lot my chest. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Who needs who needs therapy? This movie or us after sitting through it? <laughs> okay. So, anyways, and then we see the general lying to the press about like we don't know about this mega force and all this stuff, and I don't know. It's yeah. just you know, just like they didn't know about Area Fifty One. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This, this movie is a conspiracy theorist's wet dream. It's just like, wait a minute, so there's this secret black ops, multi-government, <laughs> one-world organization that just goes in anywhere and without yeah. authority and just, like, kills people, man. It's crazy, bro. It exists. I've seen the records. We all know that Megaforce is funded by the black budget, the black book, they call it. The same thing Area 51 is financed by. Sorry, I'm going like Jack Nicholson, an easy writer. <laughs> Do you know Megaforce come in all walks of life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good guys win, even in the 60s, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that, Ace Hunter, from the 60s. <laughs> I don't know, man. Leads to harder stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I, I, you know, I regret this movie didn't do well because I, I, I wanted. Well, you know... well, we're getting there. Let me, end, let me end the movie. Hold, hold okay, that yeah. thought. Sorry. So then, so then the Megaforce plane flies by as the general is spreading disinformation as politicians do, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, clearly violating Sardin airspace in violation of international treaties, and they blow up the general's helicopter in a blatant act of war. Now that f fuck all this other shit. They literally blew up uh, a general's transport in front of the press, and that's cool. Yeah. That, that's okay, everybody. All this other whatever. And then everyone laughs. Even the general's like, mwah, mwah, I ace. You you know what? I mean, geez, come on now. And then Ace has this recurring thing where he's just trying to get laid this whole movie. He's gonna meet Zara in some hotel in London. He's like, hey, hotel in London, you and me. This movie's over. Yeah. By, by the way, how come we didn't get more of the Evan Kim running commentary every time Ace is like, you know, macking down on somebody? Because we got that in the beginning of the movie. Uh, we yeah. forgot to mention that in the beginning, but. And he's like, he's literally giving a running commentary like he's describing a ball game, you know, like, and he's got the ace in the hole. Yeah. Yeah. And ace is taking a swing. It's a miss. Okay. But so yeah, ace again. hunter has the, uh, the hunt on the mind. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Was that dirty? <laughs> he's more like a booty hunter here in this movie. The hunt Jeez, on ace, the mind. Keep it in your pants. Keep it in your tight spandex pants over here. Kid. Yeah. Oh God, keep it ace. in there. Is there any underwear in that pants? <laughs> God, can Megaforce not afford some underwear? Jesus. That's a problem. You're all wearing this tight Megaforce stuff. You guys all got wood going on. <laughs> Ace, Ace says they're using their hologram technology to, ma to make themselves look huge over here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Try, he's like, hey, swing, swing. You know, like, hey, baby. No, oh, Ace. I'm sorry, baby. Mattel made my costume. Not me. <laughs> Is that an action figure in your pants? Or are you happy to see me? So anyway, I'm sorry, Mattel, not me, <laughs> once again. So anyway, everyone laughs, and then we get scenes from the movie and the Megaforce theme song by some band, 707, which is 80s as hell, even in the 80s. This is the most 80s shit. This is the most 80s soundtrack, most 80s song. That's right. I could hear this song, and I could already picture the guys singing it without even seeing them. I... Already oh, yeah. knew they were a hair band 
without yeah. having seen them. I, I would have loved to have seen the video, and they all have Ace's hair and headbands, and yeah, that would have been awesome. They're all like wearing the Megaforce Mattel costumes, the spandex, <laughs> and the, the Lycra, yeah, and they got the headbands on. Yeah. And they're like, Megaforce! So Mattel did release uh, some Megaforce Hot Wheels, I think the helicopter, and there was an Atari game, but there wasn't a big toy line for this. And why is that, Jordan? Because on a budget of $20 million, it made $5.7 million. Wow. Sorry. <coughs> I just coughed. Um, I'm disappointed that they didn't have an action figure line, and you, I'm surprised that they didn't even that they only planned ahead for the Hot Wheels and the Stomper line or whatever it was, or the, uh, you know, that they didn't even plan ahead for action figures already. I mean, where, yeah, where's the Ace Hunter action figure with the Kung Fu, uh, you know, <laughs> with the, the, the thumb kick, kissing action, the thumb kissing action? Where's the Ace Hunter figure with the thumb kissing action? Yeah. With with where's the Ace Hunter Halloween costume with with the headband? Yeah, <laughs> where's the Megaforce playset interior with the Dallas figure included? If you mailed away for it, yeah, <laughs> with the big old Confederate patch on him. Uh, like, <laughs> but can you imagine the, the uh, Megaforce like costume? And the parents are like, "Oh, you are not wearing that." <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so the movie cost twenty million dollars. It made a quarter of its budget. And uh, just give uh, some context here. Star Trek II came out that same year, that same summer, right? Yeah. That was made on a budget of $12 million, right? So, Jordan, where did this freaking money go? Um, maybe to the catering and maybe up the noses of some of the people involved. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was well, even in the 80s, you know. Sometimes people put things up their noses, even in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, the tanks, obviously, and they, they spend a million bucks building all those little doom buggies and motorcycles. There's a lot stuff. of miniature work, too, like you said. I mean, you're right. There is a lot of miniature work um, to, yeah. to make things look bigger, even. So, like, you're right. What, the where planes, did the money go? You know, They had real equipment, I think, in a lot of these scenes, and not, yeah. you know, that's not cheap. And, and of course, you know, Henry Silva's cigars, that's got to cost some money, keeping him, uh, you know, happy there. Yeah, Clearly, wow. it didn't even go to our rewrite on the set with a script doctor, even. Yeah. What? He didn't put the money in the script, and Barry Boswick was cheap. He was, you know, this was his first big movie in a while. I, I read Michael Beck later talked about how he knew this movie wasn't great, and he said, these were his words, yeah, I know it's not really a really movie ready for the Oscars, but it, it did pay for me and my wife and kids' uh, first house. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's good on him. I mean, I think Michael Beck was actually pretty good in this movie, but oh, he's good. I thought he was a good actor. Yeah, he really yeah. was a good actor. Barry Boswick's a great actor too. I don't. Yeah. I just don't get what he was doing here. I guess I, I don't I get did... what anybody's doing here. I mean, Barry Boswick's charisma carries this film. I like him. I, yeah. I think he's. I think he's fun. He's having a good time. He's he's mugging at the camera, and I, I maybe that's not what needed to happen. But that's I think part of what makes the movie memorable to today. It's it's cheesy, it's campy, and it's goddamn Barry Boswick and his headband and his like uh, blow dried hair just just cheesing it up, and that's it's, part of the fun. You don't look at this movie as a good movie; you laugh at it. You know. By the way, I think I just found my eight year old daughter's next costume is Ace Hunter. Oh, I'll nice! Put some facial hair on her too. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the perfect blonde hair already for it. So yeah. So audiences apparently didn't didn't love this film. Now it wasn't nominated for an oscar right yeah but it was nominated for a golden raspberry in fact three of course. three worst picture did not win any of these unfortunately but worst picture oh, wow. worst director how need him and worst supporting actor michael beck really oh come on now that's not fair i that disagree is not I realistically disagree with that. I'm not joking, actually, on this one at all. Also, his... I'm serious. That's not fair. No, no, disagree no, it... with that. <laughs> yeah, it is not. It, it, is, it is not worth uh, that. I mean, you 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 like, got to blame this directing the script and a bunch of other things. Don't blame the actors in this one. They're all trying. Xanadu is not a great movie. Michael Beck is in that movie as well. Is he bad in that movie? No, absolutely no. not. 
Hell, he was on a bad show called Houston Nights. Was he bad on the show? No. No. Was Michael Pere? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Michael Pere. Okay, Perret. Michael Pere, that's a different thing. <laughs> Michael Beck is a good actor, man. Right. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's not fair. I don't agree with that at all. But it was a big year. Audiences skipped it because, look, it was, 82 is, like you said, a powerful year. It was yeah. Road Warrior, E.T., Rocky Three, Conan, Tron. I forgot to mention Road Warrior as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was yeah. a stellar year. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of big movies in this year. And E.T., of course, was the mother of this year. Yeah. Just kind of wiping out the competition with the, the box office it was taken in. Because everybody was going to see E.T. all over again. And, yeah, you know. Star Trek too. So in the midst of all that, uh, and Star Trek too, yeah. Exactly. How does how does Mega Force stand out? You know, I don't know. So Jordan, what kind of rating do you give this film? What are your final thoughts? What do, what do you? What is this film? What is its legacy? What kind of rating do you give it? I mean, uh, as a uh, as a rating, I give it uh, one motorcycle rocket launcher out of ten motorcycle rocket launcher lasers firing. But short of a few, one motorcycle out of 10, few short of the lasers and a few short wow. of the rockets. That is your lowest rating ever. Yeah. I think you, you even liked the Fearless Vampire Killers more. I mean. As a, about now, as, an, as a good, bad movie, I, I give it a bigger rating probably. I yeah. give it like five beautiful women out in the desert holograms out of, you know, five <laughs> as a good, bad movie entertaining to watch. Not boring, you know. Didn't totally see, put me to sleep. So you did have fun. You did have fun <laughs> watching it. Not as a good movie, but... That's a bad rating. Uh, anyway. Did you have fun watching it, though? Is is it a good cult movie? Good, bad movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it a movie you can grab a beer and, you know, uh, smoke a bowl to? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, you know. Is it a movie you have to think about while watching? No. Absolutely. In fact, your brain might hurt if you start to think about things on this movie a little bit. Honestly, yeah. it might hemorrhage a little uh, if you start to overthink it a little. I have actually read people have gone insane trying to figure out the plot of <laughs> Megaforce and had to be put away clinically and into an actual psychiatric clinic because yeah. of it. It's, it's, it's a Zen koan. It's a Zen meditation. Like, what is the plot of Megaforce? The answer is there isn't one. Um, yes. That's the, that's so, the answer. There is and to that it's the point, existential answer of Megaforce is there is no, there is no answer to Megaforce. <laughs> well, I went back and I watched an old uh, Siskel and Ebert episode. I watched that one too. I Did you know see, what you're talking well, about. Yeah. yeah. Ebert Roger calls is it, really cold. He calls it, uh, to let me paraphrase, but he calls it confusing, muddled, and pointless. That's how he begins his review, and yeah. it gets worse from there. A pointless thriller. Was the first thing, yeah, after he said the Muddleden part as well, yeah. And, all and that. I think that's unnecessarily harsh. Yes, this movie suffers from a lack of plot, and some of the, the things that are bad with it I like. I like, like I said, the camaraderie between Ace and Guerrera. Um, yeah. Even though that completely destroys the movie, and there's no real stakes. And I mean, yeah, but that moment says, you know, it's Miller time, right? Yeah, exactly. You want to <laughs> hang with your buddy. You want to just see Ace and... And and Guerrera just chilling, just hanging, having a beer, talking about yeah. the old times. But and I'll give that to the actors. I think there's a lot of great acting in this movie. There's not much for them to do, and they're saying ridiculous. The fact that they can say such ridiculous shit straight, you know, yeah. and and have it looks like everybody was having fun with this movie. There's some sort of heart here. There's some yeah. sort of something, some je ne sais quoi. But it does feel like we only have the first two acts of a movie, and not the third. Yeah. It feels like it doesn't wrap up and nothing really happens. And at the end, you're like, why did I watch this? Oh, wait, to see Barry Bostwick uh, land a stationary prop in the back of a, a plane? Is that That's it? That's why we watched this damn thing? And it, this political stalemate and this nonsense. and, and In the back of a cargo plane? <laughs> it's not a good action ending. But it's, despite that, like, generations, I think, will love this movie as a cheesy, so bad it's good movie it is that it's it's a lot of fun the acting the props the vehicles they're all good they're all fun 
And this is, I think, the very definition of a cult film. Something that 80s kids would have, and other people, I guess, would have watched on video in the 80s and 90s. I, I didn't see this as a kid. I did, actually. I saw it on cable because my dad didn't think much of it, but thought I might like it. Like, did he think uh, I was that stupid, I guess? No, did, I, I don't. <laughs> did little kid Jordan not even like this? <laughs> no, little kid me did kind of like this, although I even little kid me thought the skydiving sequence was a bit much and cheesy and overdone and the music yeah. was cheesy and like, yeah. <laughs> Even little kid me thought that the music sounded like soft porn music. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I give this a solid. Sorry. So bad it's good. Seven out of ten. This is a fun, stupid movie. Like you said, turn your brain off. Don't think about it, or you could hurt yourself. Just enjoy it. Don't try to understand why this is wrong and why doesn't why it doesn't work. Just enjoy it for what it is. It's, it's, it's yeah. a little puppy at the pound. You know what I mean. It's a little rescue puppy that's a little damaged. It's got one eye. It's got three legs. But it just wants to be loved, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. It's a Saturday morning cartoon with a chauvinistic male character and yeah. his sidekick wearing a Confederate patch. <laughs> just think of it that way. and you'll, you know. Fun for the whole family. Fun yeah. for the whole family. <laughs> Some misogyny and everything. Oh, it's wonderful. Anyway. Yeehaw, um, honey. Mega Force, <laughs> fuck yeah! Yeah, <laughs> and so Jordan. Okay, uh, thank you all for listening. And Jordan, um, maybe next time we'll watch some other movie without uh, magical headbands and blow dried hair and, and flying motorcycles and, oh, why and not? villains that don't really care. I don't know. Oh. Now that, yeah, that needs to be yeah. Okay, even at close range had a better villain. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Jordan, exactly. maybe we'll watch a movie that's even from the 80s. I don't know. Well, just remember, Anthony, a bad movie could still be good, even in the 80s. (laughs) Even in the 80s. (laughs) All right. All right, thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. If you like this, check out our other episodes. Um, uh, We'll actually watch some movies that are maybe not this bad. But check out Megaforce and like and subscribe or whatever. Hit those buttons. And Jordan, this has been... The Robots Took My Podcast. And remember, idealism is for the 70s, but the good guys win, even in the 80s. And now a word from our sponsor. Congratulations. If you're watching this video cassette, it means that you have been selected to fight the forces of tyranny and evil with Megaforce. Due to numerous complaints and recent lawsuits, our lawyers now require us to show you this training video. Yes, I know what you're thinking. But I'll make it quick. Certain behaviors in the workplace might not be acceptable, even in the 80s. For example, you can't tell a woman that she isn't a good enough soldier, even if we all know it's true. (laughs) And you can't just grab another Megaforce employee and kiss them or even just give them an innocent pat on the behind or the rear or the the front. Yes, you heard me right. Even if they are practically asking for it. Please do not flash your privates at anyone else. Refrain from farting on other Megaforce employees and do not tie your official Megaforce headband on any other part of your body other than your head, no matter how hilarious and important to team building such conduct might be. Also, we are no longer allowed to display Confederate flags or make harmless jokes about other ethnicities, even if they are funny. Finally, believe it or not, even the traditional Megaforce salute of kissing your thumb and holding it out has also been deemed offensive to some overly sensitive individuals. If you do have your little feelings hurt, you should go cry about it to our human resources department. Remember, Megaforce is an inclusive, equal opportunity employer, and making everyone feel accepted, and Panda 2 is everyone's responsibility, even in the 80s. All trailers, clips, music, or any other copyrighted material are used sparingly, edited from their original forms, and used for the purposes of criticism, discussion, commentary, and education about these fine films.